Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of the Top 5 Weekly. In this series, each week we have a look at the most popular workshop creations on Steam. We take each one of these, analyze them, discover their features and finally test them out in the world of Stormworks. So with that all set, let's go ahead and get started with our first creation. So the first creation we'll be checking out is called BL36 Skydive version. It's done by a content creator called Skill Hunter. It's apparently meant to be a fictional World War II aircraft that's been converted for skydiving use in modern times. So let's go ahead and have a look at the plane itself. So you can see we have obviously our wings really nice on the detailing of how the wings are curving up towards the sides really like that same with the actual engines themselves you can see we have the air intakes uh, which really look good and then our landing gear which is going to actually fold in there and it seems like it's got magnets to actually close that landing gear there uh, along with that the paint job is once again it's really really nice one thing i don't like and that, that's not this content creator's fault is the use of uh these blocks obviously in stormworks we don't have anything that slopes up so it's not his fault at all however uh, it would be really nice to see a nice beautiful line going across there that's the only thing i would like to see you change on this vehicle but once again not the content creator's fault uh, he's done the best he can do with what blocks he has in game uh, along with the windows windows are really nice i haven't actually seen that before in a creation where he's actually gone ahead and used the custom door uh, blocks themselves to create little portholes really looks good looks perfectly in proportion the paint job is quite nice and unusual to what we used to in uh, planes and things and stormworks seems like we have a landing light here which is a big searchlight which is going to go ahead and face forward when we go ahead and do our landing and there's not much more going around here just normal plane things rather than control surfaces so let's go ahead and jump inside you can still cast door to get inside grab the handle up we go. Uh, so first things first is we have a whole bunch of parachutes. Once again, this is a skydiving plane. So in theory, I guess you would come to the back here and then jump out when you would have a parachute on. Pretty cool. A whole bunch of seats, uh, obviously for your passengers. Go into the cockpit itself. Now our cockpit is done really nicely once again. Seems like we have all the controls here. Let's just have a look quickly at the different controls. Landing lights, jump ready, starter, so you can obviously go ahead and click a button, which I'm sure will go ahead and turn the light on to tell everyone it's time to jump. Uh, control dials, oh, sorry, so these are the breakers for the control dials, lighting and main circuits. Engine RPS uh, dials, collective, throttle, landing gear, altitude, speed, switch controls between the two seats, great. Nav lights, interior light. Now we've gone ahead and we've just lined up here on the runway itself. One thing I did want to mention is I really like how this, how you actually control the throttle of the engine itself and how it's all set up uh, in this plane. So what you do is you actually have the throttle bar standard or basic is set to 20 or 0.2. And how you go ahead and actually roll out of the hangar itself is you just go ahead and move the collective up. And that will actually just go ahead and slowly bring you along so you can actually just taxi along. Then when you want to go ahead and actually finish lining up you can say we can drop the collective down but go ahead increase the throttle straight up like so and then increase your collective right up and then you'll see now we actually start to pick up speed and we should be able to start to take off Now, we unfortunately weren't able to take off. It just seemed like the plane didn't have enough power and we kept on actually hitting the sea as soon as we got off the runway itself. Uh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe something's obviously been changed in one of the updates. However, I'm not too sure, so we'll have to go ahead and move on to our next creation. So the next creation we're going to be having a look at is called the SSI LM26 Hussar. It's done by a content creator that's quite well known on the community itself, uh, who's called Donk. This is meant to be a utility cargo aircraft. Uh, it's capable apparently of 188 knots top speed. It also has a full autopilot system, so that's going to be quite useful for doing uh, cargo drops and so on and so forth, so you can automatically do whatever you want in the back while the plane is flying itself. Let's go ahead and have a look at it. Uh, really nicely designed. Obviously, typical SSI color scheme of the gray and black, which looks really good. Quite a few landing gears at the rear and then one in the front. Quite nice. We have our refueling probe in the front, obviously, for air-to-air -air refueling missions. That's pretty cool. 
couple uh, sensors in the front itself. Um, not too sure what those are at the moment. But once again, detailing is really quite nice on the plane. Uh, obviously, you got the writing and the company logo on the left. Uh, and then at the rear, we also have is company logo and obviously the tail number and logo there. Really quite nice then. So going on to here, it seems like we have two entrances to obviously get in and out the plane itself. I uh, wonder if there is one on the side. No, there isn't. Uh, so it's just the two on the sides here. You also have the cargo ramp at the back itself. So we can go ahead and obviously uh, load cargo in and load cargo out of the plane. Seems like we also have a refueling and electric connector just over here to obviously go and recharge it and refuel it. Quite nice. Open the doors. They retract and slide inside. Quite nice. Go ahead and get inside by just obviously going through the handle. Same as the last plane. And then straight into the plane, obviously we have the parachutes for obviously jumping out if we need to, along with the cargo rails. Let's go ahead and turn the lights on. So we have red lights, green lights. So I think those control the lights at the back. Obviously, if we want to give a warning where we're dropping or not. And then we also have the lights for the interior. So you can see here that we have the rail system that was added in a couple, well, the last update actually. And that's obviously so you can load cargo on here, onto here, and then slide it out and then through the airdrop at the back. You have the ramp, which you can see goes ahead and lowers and lifts there. Quite nice. Once again, another button just to obviously turn the lights on and off. Go into the cockpit. Cockpit itself, really nice. Uh, nicely designed. Everything seems to be in its right place. Uh, we have a pilot seat and a co-pilot seat. So we'll go ahead and jump into the, co -pilot, into the pilot seat. Uh... I've gone ahead and spawned it here on the runway already so we don't have to actually line it up ourselves. We have a hold speed system just to the left. Seems like it's on the right too. Autopilot toggle button, altitude hold, heading hold, altitude gauge, speed gauge, heading gauge, uh, indicates a lot for our landing gear. We have flaps, landing gear, engine one, engine two, RPMs for the engines. It seems like battery, fuel, switch control so if you want to control it from the co-pilot and then we also have landing lights interior lights and nav lights cool let's go ahead get this get this car started we'll give it a little throttle uh gauge the engines themselves see if we can get the jet engines to actually ignite should be able to there we go there's the first one there's the second one so what we'll do is turn off the brakes and then we'll just increase the throttle straight up and then see if we can actually go ahead and take off. Fantastic, there we go, we're up in the air. Really easy to take off, uh, not much skill required there, it's got more than enough power, it looks like it has. So, perfect, going along, what we can do now is let's go ahead and engage our speed that we want, so let's go 150, perfect. So we should go ahead and match our speed now. Great. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter in a altitude of say 150. Actually, let's do, yeah, let's do a thousand. We're going to slowly start to climb up. And then you can see because we have our heading at zero, it's now staring towards zero. So we'll go ahead and set our heading to 280. And then we should start lining up. So we can obviously still climbing up a bit now because we've got such a high altitude. We can obviously drop that down to let's say 200. So altitude's not going. We're going to dip down. Get rid of the landing gear. So I think it's this one. Yeah. Get landing gear down. We should be able to automatically drop down to our desired level. So yeah, it's pretty much about it for the cockpit itself. Uh, pretty easy to understand. All nice and useful go ahead jump in here we can grab one of our parachutes obviously as i said here you have the lights so let's say we we're going to do a parachute jump go ahead press green lights cool and then level ramp ready for us to jump out and let's go ahead and jump up Whee! and there we go pretty cool pretty easy really nice playing guys uh obviously with all those autopilot systems on there flies really well and pretty much does everything for you so let's go ahead and move on to our next creation so the next creation we're going to be looking at is called the Boy Mark II. It's done by a content creator called White Noise, once again quite well known in the community for his work. Uh, this is meant to be a quick deployment lifeboat system. Uh, it's a sub-assembly that you go ahead and add into your own creation, so quite nice, very compact. Uh, and apparently has a 3 second deploy time. So inside here we should have the actual life 
for you or lifeboat itself. I'll go ahead, jump into the rear here and actually get into it. So jump straight into it and you can see we have a whole bunch of diving equipment, which is pretty cool. Uh, a couple seats to sit down. We have the pilot seat itself. So let's go ahead and jump into there. We have a button for deploy, uh, a pump button, beacon light, and parachute. I'm guessing all of these actually only open once we've actually deployed it. it seems like there's a battery. It apparently is fully electric too. So let's go ahead and actually deploy it, see what happens. Oops. And there we go, we've actually deployed out of it. Uh, really quite cool uh, and interesting. Obviously, if you go ahead and add this to your creation, it works really nice. Um, and then we have obviously the parachute button we can go ahead and deploy. Obviously, if we were falling from the air, pump uh, just in case we get water in here, I'm guessing. And then lastly is a beacon light, obviously just to make yourself aware and be able to be found. Uh, and then we have just the actual electric electric thing which controls the propellers at the back to go ahead and move it. Pretty cool, pretty simple. Um, very nicely well designed as always, guys. Uh, and let's go ahead and move into our second, or actually into our fourth creation. So the next creation we're checking out is called the Pocket Submarine. It's done by a content creator called Alex Porte uh, over on the French side of the Stormworks community itself. Uh, apparently it's a fully electric uh, submarine itself. Uh, it also has a towable dock. So as you can see on the outside, there's this towable dock area around it. And this dock is actually meant to be for obviously storing the submarine and also for recharging it. Uh, on itself. So I'm guessing there's batteries within the dock itself. Uh, you can see there there's two winches or cables that go ahead and I guess and connect to the submarine itself. So let's go ahead and check out the dock first and then we'll actually go ahead and check out the submarine. So on the dock itself uh, you seem to have lights that's always useful. Uh, along with that is there is the crane arm to move it along so we can go ahead and get that connected to the electrical ports very good for recharging uh, we also have up and down for the cables and then <clears throat> a release button for the cables and then the front here we seem to have a hatch that opens up in the front and then there's a central mag i guess that goes and connects um connects to something and then you have the two front ones that for towing and then you also have a back door that goes ahead and opens in the rear so let's go ahead that's all done for the dock i think uh we'll go ahead and actually jump in the submarine so it's a simple hatch here as i said we have those a mag all on top and then also two electric connectors with obviously our battery levels which is quite useful door opens and closes automatically which is quite great just in case you forget about it jump inside uh we have a dowing suit obviously useful for a submarine itself Go jump into the controls. Uh, we have rotate arm and deploy arm. I guess that's for the arm there on the side with the maggle. We also have speed, front sensor, oh, sorry, uh, front sensor, I'm guessing, primarily battery levels, uh, spotlight, full ballast, empty ballast, uh, spotlight angle, a circuit breaker to obviously put our emergency magnet uh, i guess so that's for the magnets on the top to recharge it i'm guessing uh, i'm not too sure on that and then towards the rear here we have lights and then open the hatch and then also a cabin water level cool so let's go ahead fill this ballast system up see if we can get it to go down and then seems like pilot seats is top magnets under magnets uh, lights down arm up arm and we also have a arm mag or those are the controls there so we can go ahead, let's get the light on. So we have lights inside the submarine itself. We should start to sink and we can start moving along a little bit. Now if I'm correct, you have your up and down controls. If you move up and down the water like a normal submarine, there we go. So yeah, pretty, pretty nice little submarine. So I've left the biggest for last, of course. This is going to be the RRS Francis Cozier. It's done by a content creator called GB Danny, once again quite well known on the workshop himself. Uh, this has been to be a ice-breaking research vessel. So obviously you can see uh, in the beautiful red color, it's really, really nice. Uh, it has a manual sinking ship mode, which is quite, um, obviously we have seen that quite a lot before the advanced mode and the whole that automatically came in. So nice to see that you have that manual option as always. Uh, it also has two of the lifeboats, uh, deploy or lifeboat systems that we actually checked out earlier. 
so apparently that's got it worked in i'm guessing just over here to the side and also has apparently two ribs so we'll go see if we can find those later on overall the detailing is really nice uh, i really like this it looks like a ice breaking vessel itself uh detailing is absolutely great you can see we have some fire cannon systems the funnel there uh the actual mast itself along with two cranes and seems like two cargo areas in the front and then towards the rear of the ship we have it looks like a big hatch i'm not too sure what's in there we'll go check that out just now along with the actual ladder system i actually really like that how he's gone ahead and used the the railings to enclose the ladders there really quite nice I haven't seen that before really cool so let's go ahead check this out um i'm not covering all the features apparently there's hundreds of different things on here uh in terms of detailing and rooms and different things but uh, those were more or less the ones that i liked and the features that i thought were pretty cool the rear here we seem to have our actual rudders and then something over there it looks like an observation thing but we'll go inside and check it out let's go open the door here jump inside deck is nice and green um still don't know what's inside there we'll go check it out what's this loading ramp oh hello um okay interesting oh okay so you i guess you could you could drive a small boat or what a cargo or something into this area and then you would go ahead and just bring it up to deck level pretty cool pretty cool like that let's go ahead and check this out so go into a very small door but nice uh go ahead go in here let's close these doors behind us got our rail system another so this is the hangar okay so we've got a hangar here and i guess you can only open it from the inside and you can store things i guess a helicopter if you wanted to store a helicopter in here quite nice or you could even store a boat and then push it out onto the deck itself quite a few doors a uh, boat station so this is the ribs so you can go ahead and deploy the ribs so let's see if we can is there a button to open the actual door itself uh, might be on the rib so okay there you go so you can just press the button opens the door and then automatically extends it out pretty cool and then you can obviously go ahead and drop it down and i'm guessing the controls for the magnets are on the rib very nice very nice very nice let's go ahead and close this all system up let's go check out what else we have another boat station over there and then these i guess are the emergency life buoy systems very cool very cool front here what do we have it seems like ah these are the controls for the cranes and then we have big car very very big cargo area down there i wonder if that has a i'm just going to jump down here what is the turbine shaft oh that's got water in it i'm closing that uh then you have cargo hold doors cool very nice and then down here what's in here i like how he's gone ahead and labeled everything observation deck ah okay so this is what we were seeing earlier uh and then lights to see underneath the ship pretty cool very cool yeah once again all the labelings really help guys um i always love to see it when people have done that it just tells you where you are danger Ooh. engine room danger signs guessing those might be the fuel tanks uh so we have firefighting equipment obviously if there's any fires whole bunch of different batteries engine rooms done really nicely there seems to be something upstairs there uh we'll go check that out so you have a whole bunch of dials and things to get these engines working I guess go ahead and turn these on and leave those going I think you need to leave those on as far as I remember reading somewhere um, there we go fantastic so we've got the engine started uh still got the danger signs really cool. let's go see if we can get back up to deck level and where there was a staircase so i need to get up hmm. how do we get back up there we go there was a staircase engines are running we seem to have a uh, galley over there pretty cool also have kitchen very nicely detailed as i would expect from everything else we've already seen in the ship um rec room very cool 
shower. <laughs> nice. Uh, toilets. Cool. What's down here? Uh, I guess it's like a medical bay, hospital area. Go ahead and move down to here. And then, oh, okay, that you have an observation area for the engine room itself. Really nicely done, guys. The detailing on the ship is absolutely excellent. Uh, let's go upstairs. Okay, and we're back in the same area we were earlier. So let's go now back up to second level. Seems like we have a whole bunch of cabins all along here. Another observation deck to go out. More cabins. Wow, so much detailing. We'll go up to the a deck, cool. Got the fire cannon systems here, so I guess it's yeah. There we go, cool. Pretty useful, very useful systems to have, of course. Turn that off for now. Uh, let's go ahead, close that door, and go into the bridge. So we have the main controls. So we see like some kind of screens there. Uh, lighting circuits, interior lights. Ooh, hello. Yeah, I'm going to turn those off because that is lagging for me quite a bit. Uh, we have a weather station, seems like, uh, navigation station, radars, sonos, or sonar actually. Cool, very cool. Um, guess these are just our throttles and things. And then we also have a GPS system over here. And then we can just go ahead and jump into our helms. So these are the main controls. And then the clutch, anchors, and then clutch again. So let's go ahead. Disengage the clutch. On one side, disengage the clutch. On the other side, we should start going forward now. Oops. Okay, I uh, might have damaged that because we left it open. Whoops, my bad. So yeah, pretty going pretty nice. Uh, seems to work really well. Going at a, a de very decent speed for the ship itself. Um, I'm going to start turning a bit there. Yeah. That's about it guys, a uh, really really nice ship, really cool, loads and loads and loads of detailing on there, uh, as I was saying just now. But yeah, that's pretty much about it, I think we'll go ahead and end today's video there. Uh, as always guys, comment below what you'd like to see in any future videos, uh, while there don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to follow any of my future content coming out. And finally, thank you for watching the video, I hope you've enjoyed it as always and found it somewhat entertaining, and then we'll go ahead and we'll see you in the next one.